right. Hello there, and welcome to the Absolute Game of Nerds. This is a new podcast, an inaugural podcast for myself, JP, and Rohan here. We are two non-geeks, non-nerds that like to collect comic books, and we like to talk about it. So our hope for today's podcast is to give you basically a background of our collecting, what we've done, where we came from, the who, what, where, when, and why of our collecting, and then with future podcasts, talk more about specifics, maybe some spec, maybe some talk about books that we bought and our, our ideas on their long-term investability or PC versus flipping books, things of that nature. So uh, with that, I'd like to say hi, I'm JP. Hi, I'm Rohan. And we're going to get right into it today. So we're going to have Rohan, since he was kind enough to... Uh, to uh, do this from work. He's going to go ahead and go first here. He's at his gym uh, and he's going to go ahead and give you sort of the background of his his investing. And uh, then I'll go ahead and get into it and go from there. Yeah, I wouldn't call it necessarily my investing, but uh, my my collecting. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, my name is Rohan. Uh, I am in here in Seattle. Um, as JP said, I'm at my gym. I own a gym in downtown Seattle, kind of like a CrossFit style type gym. Um, husband, three kids, kind of the usual, just a regular guy. Um, I grew up, uh, loving, uh, comics, like probably to about 10 years old, I would say I grew up on the X-Men, Spider-Man, um, specifically their, uh, their cartoons. Um, that really got me into it. I started with cards uh, and I started collecting, um, and that died off about till I was about nine years old, I would say, but X-Men, Spider-Man, Fantastic Four. The Hulk, Silver, oh, and Silver Surfer. Those were kind of my my go to favorites. What about you? Um, I would say the what brought me into collecting was uh, was Spider Man. So Spider Man's always been my favorite, but uh, Batman, Wolverine, uh, those were those were the names. You know, again, back when we collected, was Avengers big? It wasn't no. for me. You know, no. now it is. So uh, how things have changed. But it was X Men, Wolverine, Spider Man, uh, anything. Venom, <laughs> back in that time frame. So, yeah, yeah. No, I should I should have mentioned yeah, Batman. The Batman cartoon, like the cartoons, is really probably what really got me into um, all of this. Right, is watching those cartoons and growing up on those cartoons. And the three were Batman, X Men, and Spider Man. Yeah, was this? I know the Batman, the New Adventures of Batman. They had a Superman show, and the X Men Adventures. Or did, what was it called? The X Men. I think it was the X-Men Adventures, right? 94, the song that just played in the most recent Multiverse of Madness. Yes, exactly. Yeah, it was but on Saturday mornings. I always remember that. Did Spider-Man have a show in that time frame? Yeah, Spider-Man had, Spider had a show um, that ran for several years. Um, yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. I'm trying to remember that one because that might have – I don't remember the Spider-Man show. I don't remember the Superman show, but I know I definitely have seen the new adventure, the Batman and the X-Men bio. I saw them all. Yeah. So those those ones, but I don't remember the Spider Man one. But well, again, good news, good news is now you can watch these all on Disney Plus now if you want to catch yeah. up. I mean, there's so much content now, and that's what we didn't have back then. Yeah. Um, you know, when I started collecting, I I went into I started with um, baseball cards. That's what got me into collecting. You know, baseball cards was the thing I did. I was a big baseball fan. I'm from Pittsburgh, loved the Pirates, so I you know was collecting baseball cards, and I. And when I was on vacation, it was either on vacation at my grandmother's house. I think it was my grandmother's house. She would give me money, a couple bucks, and run down to 7-Eleven and go buy comic books. And the first book I bought, because it was such a cool cover, was, I think, I don't know if you can see it, but Amazing Spider-Man 269 with Fire Lord on the cover and a black suit Spider-Man. But you still have? That's the original one? That's the original one, because it's newsstand, right? Yeah, that's so that's awesome. the one I bought. And it's, you can, it got some spine ticks. It was... It was read pretty well, let's put it that way. Yeah. Um, but that was one of the first books I bought, and I have a power pack one here. Power pack number, let's call it number 10. And the reason I bought it was because it had sharks on the cover, and I was into sharks too. So what stupid things, what neat things kids do yeah. <laughs> today. Uh, but those are the first couple of books I bought, and I really didn't take hold until maybe a few years later whenever a uh, buddy of mine in, in I think it was in uh, junior high, we like to draw and draw on comic stuff, you know, superheroes and started to buy more comics just to get better ideas of how to draw certain things, certain poses. 
And that's where McFarlane got introduced to me, seeing how he did it and Jim Lee and Lee Feld and, uh, you know, wanted to collect those books. And, you know, one of the early books that I really had a, 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 a love for but never actually got a chance to buy was The Punisher One because that was such a great drawn cover. I think that was Mike Zeck and uh, just such a great cover. And I remember seeing that in the, in the um, comic book store. And my mom would, didn't let me get that because it was too violent of a book because books weren't graded back then. So you yeah. could read all of it. Right. So I'd see them on the, on the, on the, you know, on the, at the comic book on the wall at the comic book shop. And, you know, she, you know, you can't buy that one, but I could buy the Wolverine uh, Hulk 340 with Wolverine on the cover. Totally <laughs> much, was okay to much buy. more uh, peaceful there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was a better, less, uh, a less uh, violent book, but either, either way it, it got me into, seeing those images and the, and the covers and then reading the books and getting the artwork from them, you know, catapulted me from McFarland to Leefeld to Jim Lee, and then just wanted to accumulate all their books. As you can see from behind me, all my McFarlands behind me um, that I've been collecting since, since then. And, um, you know, it was a good time during that. And, you know, Rowan, you would experience the the nineties of the boom and bust of that time frame. We yeah, both, I mean, uh, yeah, I, I'm a '90s kid. Well, I like I just the the comic books that I, we had that I always will never forget, uh, and we would trade them. And I remember we always had these. It was the Jim Lee X Men one, the Todd yep. McFarlane Spider Man one, and I remember we thought we were so cool because we found an X Factor one, which is from like 1986 or something like that. And so as '90s kids. Like, whoa, this is an old book from the 80s. This is going to be worth a lot of money. I mean, it's still, you can get that dump book for $15 even today. Um, right. We thought it was it was something. But it was the X-Men and the Spider-Man uh, ones. Um, those two books, like I remember holding those, flipping through them, reading them, uh, trading them back and forth between friends. We always, those two were the two most um, iconic um, and memorable books um, from those days. Um, I'm kind of the reverse as you though. Like I was collecting comics and comic cards and it tailed off as I got into baseball cards. Mm. Um, so I've been in Seattle as a huge Ken Griffey Jr. fan. Uh, and then the Sonics of that era with Sean Kemp and Gary Payton. So we started collecting cards and that, that I was like, Oh, okay. I'm too old for comics. Now I'm going into sports cards. Um, yeah. That's so. the, I went the other way and it was kind of, they, I still was into the into collecting the baseball cards, but noticed towards the end of the probably before I started college was which was ninety five that going to shows either show whether it be comic books or baseball cards, you just had this feeling that you know you used to get fifty cents on a dollar to the dealers, then you got down to getting twenty five cents on a dollar because that buffed started to take place, and and both started to tail off. I mean, yeah, they, again. Both are, are super popular now. Maybe they'll tail off like they did, but it, it has come full circle again. But I remember that time frame that it just wasn't cool anymore to c collect them. But again, you and I probably reason we got out, right? Our origins again, you know, how we got into it, but how we got out of it was either college started or something new took hold of your time. And I think if that comic bust wouldn't have happened, we probably still would have stuck with it. Yeah, I mean, in all reality, like, I didn't even know there was a bust until, you know, years later, right? Like, I, when, when I was there, like, I, I wasn't aware of it. Yeah, I could tell because I, I would do a lot of, not flipping, but I would speculate on, especially on the football cards with Heisman Trophy winners, trying to get that rookie card to, you know, have the next, who was the guy back then? We didn't have Peyton Manning yet. I mean, geez, it was Barry Sanders, Walter Payton, trying to have those cards. So, hey, what can I do? I miss those so I can try to get the next best Heisman winner. And then same thing with comic book collecting. And then you'd notice when you go to a show and someone would say, oh, that's worth hundred bucks. I'll give you 50. And I knew it because I didn't pay 50 for it. And I was okay with it. But then when they started offering you $25 and you said, ah, this isn't as lucrative as it used to be. It's not as much fun. And, you know, luckily I, I kept a lot of my books and not as many of my cards. I, I did have some, some of the cards from the, that era, but most of the comic books I kept. Um, but we got out of it. I mean, you know, you, when you're a kid, your your taste change, and mine definitely did. Whenever college started, and, and not long after college, you get married, have kids, and 
none of the time did I ever stop not watch a Marvel movie that came out. I, I saw Spider Man when it came in the theaters. The X Men movies. I saw the X Men movies. No, definitely saw the you know, um, had my kids were young. Well, they, 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 you know, about three years old. My oldest at the time when Iron Man came out, and I said they're doing an Iron Man movie. What the heck? What happened to X Men? And yeah. not knowing the background of, of Marvel and geez, look what it caught catapulted from from that time. I mean, my kids have all the toys of that time frame, the stuffed animals, the, you know, some of the toys. And I'm like and I think about it. And that's what you and I probably did as kids. You had Star Wars, G.I. Joe, He-Man, uh, whatever that thing you were into watching. And that's what my kids did. And I bought it, but I didn't buy the comics during that time. Yeah. Well, it's funny, too, though, about talking about those movies is that especially with iron man was the first of the mcu and so since the mcu it's like people have kind of forgotten like the first spider-man second spider-man first x-men and the second x-men those are awesome movies and to this day i still think are awesome like spider-man 2 and x2 i think are still some of the best comic book movies like i've watched them both recently again and they're still like x they stand yeah, I was. I still like Spider Man one. I have not rewatched any of the X Men movies, but they didn't. And again, I wonder back then if because we weren't into it, what happened to the comics at that time, right? Yeah, in terms of prices and whatnot. And, and yeah. now we run into it. Not to jump too far ahead here, but with current movies and how they move move the the books, and and really, some of those movies in the early two thousands take out Spider Man, the X Men. I like the Fantastic Four movie. Which but one? The the uh, Chris Evans one. Ah, okay. The first. Right. One. I've seen both of those ones. The first, the first ones. I saw. I fell asleep in this. The most recent one that came out with uh, that group. Maybe it was late. I turned it on late or whatnot. Oh Seemed no! Right. The the one with, like Michael B. Jordan and yeah, uh, dude, that one no it is straight boring. Is it as hell? <laughs> like it is bad. And I haven't got through it and didn't want to as of yet because I like the other ones. They were kind of corny, but it didn't really. Move didn't want to make me, you know, buy Fantastic Four. I like to watch comic book movies, but definitely like when the Silver Surfer showed up in the second one. Yeah, I, I will say though, uh, I recently turned not really, like several months ago, just like put on that original Fantastic Four we were talking about. Man, it is bad. I mean, like especially when you look at like the effects and like oh. how just like the it's shot. It is so crap. You're just like. I could have made this quality of a movie in high school like level <laughs> bad. Like it's so bad. Well, think about there was a lot of the Daredevil came out. Daredevil was bad. Do you remember that original Daredevil. Hulk with Eric Bana was also bad? I, I like that one actually. I like that one. Oh, I, see, Ed, I like the Ed, Ed Norton one. Uh, I, I guess it's part of the MCU. It is, it is now, but back again, I I was trying to understand the continuity of everything. No, and I have an old uh, stock report. And, I, and I, I've read through it before of basically what Marvel did to try to stay alive, selling those properties off. Yeah, yeah. Why they made those movies. And um, really, the continuity was so hard that it wasn't until 2008 that that continuity began. And that's what propelled the MCU forward. And there, I think there was some booms and busts throughout the last from 08 until 2020. I'm not aware of them because I wasn't collecting back then. What's I crazy on that stock report you're talking about, though, like, have you read the whole story? It's like when Sony bought Spider-Man for whatever it was, like Marvel offered to them like the entire slate for like 25 million. And they were like, no, nah, we're cool on Spider-Man. Uh, and <laughs> then you think like, right, Disney bought it for what? $2 billion a couple of years later or something like that. Yeah, it was, it was, I mean, I, when Disney bought Star Wars, when Disney bought Marvel, I started, I bought Disney stock at that point just because, mm -hmm. Hey, what the, what this is going to turn into. And it really didn't amount to much in the stock price, even though those movies were churning out almost a billion dollars yeah. per movie. I, I just don't get that part of it, but that, that started to solidify this pop culture that we're dealing with, that we're into now is those movies started in 2008 with continuity. But if you go back further, the Spider-Man was good. X-Men was good. Think about the Punisher movie. Right, there was Thomas also mul there was also multiple punishers. There's one um, Dolph Lundgren. Well, no, there was that. So Dolph Lundgren was in the '90s. Then there was the Punisher with Thomas. G there was two. With they Travolta. Made two, there was, and then there was another Punisher movie. Yeah, the War Journal one or some, War Zone. Yeah, there was a yeah with a, an actor I've never seen before. Yep, and so you had those cheesy movies again. The Tra Tra Travolta Thomas Jane Punisher was 
they never have done Punisher right. Yeah. The Birth and All Punisher series on Netflix was pretty good, but I, I've i never seen it done as I would have expected it from that first miniseries. Yeah, the Daredevil Netflix series was before the MCU. That was awesome. Yeah, I, I'm almost through season two of the, or starting season two of that. But again, that's like it's kind of weird that, that we're dealing with the, for those 20 years that we weren't collecting. I mean, we watched the movies, we watched the shows, but we never had the we didn't want to. Yeah. You know, I mean, I got my books out from time to time to look at them, but it didn't make me want to start collecting again. I, I don't know what propelled me in 2021, the end of it, or 2022 to start buying again. I mean, I watched almost every movie. I critiqued every movie and I like Thomas Jane Punisher. Why was it not as good as it should have been? Like that little mini series had so much uh, aggression in it and so much anger from the Punisher, but they never recaptured that. And again, you can't now with Disney probably, but they could have back then and, and didn't. So, you know, it, all those things didn't really make the comics jump any of those particular movies until now. So um, maybe that's a lot of reason why we're back into it. Um, but, you know, we had a hiatus that didn't really propel, to, propel us back into it um, until now. I don't, I, you know, I, do you know what event sparked you to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like it started with me. So I started in uh, 2022 in terms of collecting comic books, like May of 2022 is exactly when I started. But right before that, so it was like the end of 2021. I remember my brother showed me this. He's like, oh, I'm going to buy this um, Fantastic Four number five NFT. Um, and it was on that VV app. And I was like, that's kind of cool. Like, what? how much does that cost? And I, at the time, I was like, NFTs were just oh, yeah. coming onto the scene, right? And like, you, you heard those stories about like, this NFT went for $63 million. And this NFT went for... Ten thousand dollars. So it was like, I heard NFT, and he told me he's buying. It. I was like, assumed it was like super expensive. I was like, how much is that? And he was like, oh, six dollars. I was like, oh, I, I'm down to buy that. Like, um, that was when kind of VV was first started too. And it was like at that time, it, because of bots and things like that, it was really hard to actually get through on a drop and buy stuff. Anyways, I ended up finding this, and like, I would start to buy. There would be like a one that came out a week, and it was like six bucks a week. So what big deal? Uh, but that kind of got me like sparking my because like that Fantastic Four or Five, which is like that's Doctor Doom first appearance, right? I didn't know when I was a kid. I knew Doctor Doom. I didn't know Doctor Doom's first appearance was uh, Fantastic Four number five because I was in the '60s, right? I, you know, maybe I, you know knew some details like that, but and so they would pop out this NFT every week, and it'd be like this key issue because of this and this key issue. I was like, man, I'm really getting back into this, and so I started collecting those. And I have a bunch of them still. Now, granted, the crypto market is completely crashed. <laughs> They're not worth really yeah. anything. But I mean, I'm spending six bucks to, you know, right, sometimes like I bought it. Yeah. And as I kind of was like learning about, like relearning all this stuff that I read growing up, um, we I remember we took the, our kids to like one of those play places at the at the mall by us, just kind of, it was a rainy day. It's like, we need to get some energy out. And there was a comic book store uh, on the floor below. So I was like, oh, let me just pop in there. And I went in um, and it was all modern stuff. Like they didn't have anything that I like we grew up on. And so I just talked to the person. I was like, Hey, do you guys have any, any of the stuff from like the nineties or, or older? It's like, no, we don't, but there's this other comic book store. If you want that stuff that you should go to called ancient comics. And so I was like, mm -hmm. okay. And so like later that day we were free and I was like, I'm going to just go roll in there and see how it looks. I ended up hanging out there for like an hour and a half talking to the owner. It's like a small shop, right? It was like, it's like 600 square feet maybe. And I ended up buying like twenty five dollars worth of comics. I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. Like, I found a, I found the X Men one was one of the ones I bought, uh, and a couple other issues. And I was like, man, this is that was a lot of fun. And then it just kind of snowballed from there. And as I um, did that, I went again the next week, and then I found a different comic book store to just. And I started looking up all the comic book stores around me to see which ones had things that I liked. And I started going like once a week, and it's kind of just like my. Um, it just became kind of my like um, fun thing to do on my own um, to kind of get me away from, you know, work and the kids and things like that. And then I started, you know, buying a little bit more. Um, and then I remember that that first day that I went to that ancient comics, Jeff, the owner was like, he was telling me, he's like, you know, if you want to learn a lot, you can learn a lot on like YouTube. Um, so I started looking up things on YouTube and on Instagram for that matter. And, you know, I found a couple of channels that I liked. I used to, and then I started watching um, the live claim sales on A1, which is in Sacramento. I don't know how I got 
found A1. It just came up, and I started watching a couple of them. It's like, oh, man. And they would have these huge keys that they would be dropping, and people would be buying. Like, man, that is awesome. Um, and that's kind of how it started, right? And at the time, you know, again, like like we both said, like, we don't, I don't have $3,000 to drop just like that on Hulk 181. So it's like, okay, I'm going to, you know, I, I, I enjoy this, you know, 10 to $20 comic. Like that's totally fine with me. Um, and then I just started thinking, I was like, okay, if I have a couple hundred dollars a month, I can buy, let's say 10 comic books, or I can save that couple hundred this month, save that couple hundred the next month, and I can buy one $500 comic, let's just say. Um, and that was like, you know, I kind of like the idea of having these bigger blue chip books. And so then I started focusing on that. And, and like, you know, I mean, as you learn more, you want more, All right. um, and it just kind of grows and grows. And now it's like, I'm super into it. I mean, obviously we're doing a podcast on it now. <laughs> yeah. It becomes an obsession. Yeah. You know, that's, that's how I'm, I mean, it was an obsession for me as a kid because I like to draw and I liked, I didn't read the stories. I just liked the covers. I liked the interior artwork. I mean, I know the storyline, but a lot of my storyline information came from, I have a big Marvel book that has Spider-Man on the cover of, of it. It's, Is that the Marvel Encyclopedia? Yeah. It's, it's yeah. like, it's more of a, it was the original encyclopedia that came out and it gave a lot of background on to the early days of Marvel. So a lot of my knowledge came from there back then. So when I, when I got back in again, like I got kids, I was always busy with their sports stuff. I didn't have really any hobbies of my own. And throughout COVID, we didn't really do much until the vaccines came out, not to get into that kind of stuff. But essentially, once everybody was cleared to go out, right, we were driving around to the mall and we live in an area that doesn't have a ton of stuff, a ton of malls, you know, your Walmarts and your Lowe's. And we I was driving past the uh, comic shop that's up by me. I only have one that's about 15, 20 minutes away. The next closest one is 50 miles. So I drive past them and I said to my kids, they were in the car with me and I said, let's stop in there. So we stopped in there and the, you know, the, the guy, I remember the guy inside was wearing a mask. He was kind of heavy, heavy set guy. And we didn't have masks on. And I said, do you want us to put one on? And he's like, no, you're fine. I said, okay. And he stayed behind the, the counter with the cover over top of the counter. And, and we just sort of looked at all the wall books and I saw the, I think Batman 423. We saw the first Lucius Fox. And he just was telling me everything about it and seeing the prices. And I was like, geez, oh, man, like this stuff really went up. You know, it's, it's crazy. And we BS with this guy for a bit, left the store. And as I'm leaving the store, I saw a in-the-box toy, Megatron, you know, the Transformers, yep, Transformers. for $1,400. I said, you know, it makes me mad I ever played with my stuff. I should have just yeah. left it in the box. But who the heck still has this stuff in their boxes? I mean... I had at one point early, I had some Star Wars items that I had in the box, nothing vintage, but 90 stuff. When the first, when the, when the episode one came out, I had a Boba Fett and some other things in the box, had it tucked away in a suitcase. My three-year-old son at the time, this was probably, let's say 11, 2011, 2012, opened the box up the suitcase and cut open every one of those toys out of the box. So I never had anything kept in the box. So it was hard enough as a kid not to play with, let alone my own kids would open that stuff up years ago. What's uh, funny is you I, ask who has these toys in the boxes. It's guys like us, but that were then, right? Like, yeah, it wasn't uh, yeah. kids that kids didn't buy these toys. Like I got to put these in the box and keep them unopened. Like it was guys in their thirties that are mid thirties or whatever. And they were like in 1998, like I'm going to buy this transformer store uh, toy and not open it. Cause it's going to be worth something. Like that's what and, we're and, doing now, essentially with comic books. Yeah, trying to trying to do that, and and they they specced it back then, and I saw it. I was like, wow, that's. I wish I'd have kept that, and that made me go back and start looking at my uh, my stuff, and and then uh, somehow I got introduced to it on Instagram, seeing those Elite Eleven at Elite Eleven, seeing those live sales, and the first book I bought, and I went. There's a store. It's not a comic book store, but the guy sells comics or has comics there but mostly gaming items. And and some years back, I thought, you know, it's time to sell some of my comics. I'm not into it anymore. It's been 20 years. This is like 2018, let's say. And I sold a stack of comics, including my Spider-Man 300, 
So Amazing Spider-Man 300, 298, 299. Um, first or second appearance of Deadpool and some other X-Force books I sold. And I might have got 200 bucks, and I think more along the lines, I got 100 bucks for them at the time. And I thought, I was after Christmas, sure, hundred extra 100 bucks. I don't, these things aren't, you know, they're What's not really anything? jumping in value. I think it needs to be graded. And I just said, to hell with it, I'll get rid of them, some of them. So after that initial meeting or, or time we spent at that comic show or comic shop, I went back and said, I got to go find those books back from that that gamers uh, store. So a couple of days later, or maybe a week later, I went out to that gamer store and, and asked him if he had them. And he said, I don't still have them, but I have a copy of amazing Spider-Man 300 if you're interested in it. And that was the first book I bought. I remember taking in some game stuff to trade in on that amazing Spider-Man in order to pay the little least amount as I could. But I think I got a hundred bucks for those books in 2018 and bought that damn amazing Spider-Man back for almost $500 yeah and uh, and that hurt i was like oh at least i got it back you know what's not a, this is the only book i'm gonna buy i got it back it's back in my collection it's sort of how i felt and and then i started talking to a buddy who's a bigger collector collecting mostly golden age and he said you know you got to really try to collect graded books high grade books and spend the money because they have the biggest return and i'm looking at a spider-man 300 uh nine six or nine eight for like six thousand bucks this was march of 2022 so not very long ago. And so end of 2021, I'm in the shop and then I'm buying back my books a couple months later, a couple weeks later, and then I'm into it now by March. Looking to spend six grand on a stinking Spider-Man book. Couldn't bring myself to do it, you know? And then a couple of those live sales I saw on Elite and I saw some, you know, more reasonably priced ASMs, 300, and bought that. And, you know, then from there, it's the live sales I did, like you mentioned. Didn't buy anything huge, but little keys here and there and hundred bucks here. And then, you know, what I've been doing as of lately, and that's what we can get into next is sort of what we're, where our uh, collecting has morphed into, you know, mine was, let me get back all my old books I sold. And then went into, Oh, geez, I, look at that. Look at that. And it became an obsession. And, and now I'm, you know, I was hitting, I didn't have a comic book store near me. So I was hitting antique stores any antique store i've hit antique stores from from the from pennsylvania all the way down to virginia and over to long beach california trying to find books and because i don't have a comic store near me and i really i like going to comic st stores but they already have them priced appropriately i'm trying to make margin because again what i'm trying to do is find a book at an antique store that has some margin that was sitting there that i can turn into let's say that fantastic four not number five. We won't, we won't get that lucky with something at the antique store, uh, but maybe enough to buy a higher grade ASM 300, right? Find yeah. enough of those books of, you know, $5 for this book is worth a hundred and, you know, trying to turn that into and flipping that into what I really wanted. And that's basically what I wanted was to get back my collection. And then now it's getting the stuff I, we didn't buy as kids, right? I didn't have Punisher one because mom wouldn't let me get it too violent. Um, I didn't have Omega Men 3, wanted always wanted Lobo, right? Didn't have that. So that's what it's turned into getting the books that were important to me then that I couldn't get back then. And uh, I don't know about you, but there's a couple on our list that have become high end that may take some serious planning to get get those books. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it was interesting too. So when I told you I went to that store for the first time, which was again, May of 2022. So I have not looked at comic book prices since I was a kid. So I had no idea where things were at. And I went to that store. You know, I'm a small business owner. I got shut down a whole long time while the whole COVID thing happened. And like that crushed like my business. And so I went to this comic book store. I'm like, oh, you know, people come here. Therefore, they're probably were closed down. And I was talking to Jeff, the owner, and I was like, you know, man, has, has the last two years been really tough for you being closed? And he's like, it's like, man, comic books boomed during COVID like no other. He's like, I've never made so much money selling comics. He's like, I'll probably be able to retire a few years earlier than I expected because of this. He's like, because a couple like, Superman, death of Superman. I was like, was really? I was like, he's like, yeah. He's like, you know, with people stuck at home, they had to find things to do. And comics was one of those outlets, I guess. And you know, I was like, I guess that makes sense. Um, and then it's kind of funny now, like, you know, then I went to my first show and I went to another show and it's like prices were still pretty high. 
and now it's like it's kind of funny like you know it's not even a year later and like i mean i would say prices have dropped on some of the bigger stuff for like by like 40 50 percent you know which is crazy yeah and it seems like from what i what we learn right like this is now where we're starting to get to would have been the natural trajectory had there not been the pandemic yep uh, which is good for us because you know like we talked about like we have six thousand dollars to drop on asm 300 uh right it's, so prices coming down is only better for us and for i'm sure most people and i think for for you and i the the fact that we got in late 2021 early 2022 and not really jumped into it you know i mean 500 bucks on the asm 300 was you know something i just thought i had to do but i wasn't fully engulfed into it then and had we been a year prior we might have been paying way higher for some books. i'm yeah. sure i paid higher for some books um but again it comes down to you want them for your personal collection it doesn't we're not dealers we're personal collectors trying to find you know the books we want and again you know i think it's we're lucky that we got into it when we did because we can benefit from some of this pricing and, and hopefully this does turn around i just i start to think about the early 2000s and those magazines and those um movies that came out and they didn't propel the industry forward and now that we're in phase four at the end of phase four that wasn't that great will phase five and six help propel these books higher or are we going to sit on these for 20 years yeah you know? Well, I mean, I think the books that I, you know, speaking of kind of where our tastes have evolved, the books that I want to collect now are these bigger blue chip, chip uh, bigger blue chip keys. And while I, as you and I have talked about before, like comic books is a hobby for me. Like we have our own investments and portfolios and things like that. I do comic books purely for the enjoyment aspect. That being said, the books that I am interested in are the books that, you know, if you want a real return on them, you do need to hold them for 10, 20 long term, right? I'm not looking to get into this kind of flip game um, kind of with the ones that I want to keep, right. right? Like if I see a book that's like, oh man, I can, it's a great price on that. I can use that to stair step to the book I want, you know, then I will do that. But otherwise, um, you know, the books I want to keep are going to be for that long term. Um, and it's kind of funny as short lived as this hobby has been so far for me, it's like, I already think like, this is gonna be really cool to get one of my kids into and I can pass the collection down to them and kind of thing like that. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, I, I don't, I look at it as an investment side of things. So I look at it a little different than you do, but I, I, I have books that I want to keep for my personal collection. And, and, you know, I have a box still full of all the books that, and again, the McFarland's on my wall, those are all been kept from my, from the nineties, from when I collected. So what I did was just, I'm doing the same thing now that I did back then. I tried to find a book that was hot, flip it to get money to buy what I really wanted. And I look at it that way that if I'm buying, you know, again, if we, you know, we're going to try to do a podcast here coming up called, you know, the hunt for 181, right? But if I'm going to sink $3,000 on that book and that's a low grade. Yeah. Like what enjoyment do I get out of having that book versus 10 other $300 books? And, and, you know, when you look at something that's a key, that means something to you, it, it, it makes you feel good, right? So that's, yeah. so will that three, I, I go back and forth with something like that. Like that's how my mind sort of wired with the investment side of it is that, is this good use of capital? Even though I find enjoyment from it, it's definitely a hobby for me. And it was back then, you know, it's not my business. It's just something I do for fun. But again, to, I mean, we could just drop money after money on this stuff of our, you know, not going think I think one way you can look at it is like, look at your background right now. You've got all those comic books on the wall and things like that. So I personally don't have a comic book space, but I eventually hope to have one. And when we talk about like enjoying them, that's how you enjoy them, right? You're putting them up on your wall. You like to look at them. You like looking at the art, right? If you have dozens of small keys, you're not going to put, you can't plaster your entire wall with them, right? Yeah, but you could put that one Hulk 181 up there, and you're gonna be damn happy every time you see that. Yeah, right. Yeah. Whereas the other books, the smaller ones, are gonna sit in a box, and once you got them, what are they gonna do? They're just gonna sit in that box. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I listen. I mean, well, I listen to some podcasts and and YouTube, and I see guys like, oh, I think I have that one. I gotta check my boxes for that. It's like, well, 
I don't want these in the dark, right? I yeah. want them all displayed. And I'm running out of room to display them because I have a lot of little keys that I, you know, have some significance to a character I like. So I bought the key, the little, you know, like Wolverine Deadpool or Wolverine 88 with Deadpool on it. I mean, it was that a hundred dollar book and it's nice to display, but there'll be another one, right? There's only one Hulk 181, one ASM 129, one superhero, you know, Marvel superhero 20 with doom on the cover. So uh, that's probably a, your, a good point. Uh, yeah displaying these items and again but you know i look at it a couple different ways and i say is that a good return or a good use of your money and then you're gonna you want to give them to your kids i mean my kids are somewhat older uh, they they think it's cool but they don't really want to collect with me and, and maybe they will someday maybe they'll change their mind but i don't want to be the old guy at the show trying to get rid of my collection yeah trying to get some of my money back that i have all this stuff here that you sunk in <clears throat> thousands yeah. And you got enjoyment and now you're at a show and you're like, all right, I'll take a hundred bucks for that. <laughs> and, yeah. yeah. And I, I feel bad for some of those guys I see at shows because they're trying to get out of it. And it's it's hard to unload this stuff. I mean, you and I our Instagram, we do YouTube and and uh, podcasts and the YouTube and podcasts are n normally people who are successful at selling books for the most part. Right. Or collecting, we'll call it. I mean you got money you can be successful collecting just buy what you want right yeah but if you like uh i could i don't even want to bring up the name but you get a couple of these influencers who are good at flipping books or whatnot and they they get some benefit out of it but you go to a show and you see these same guys who they just can't unload stuff and i don't yeah. you know i just think there's a there's a dichotomy between the successful influencer youtube guy or gal who's got a nice show a nice following and then you got the other guy who's at the show every week traveling from place to place and he just can't get rid of these books yeah. right because it just it died off for him the love is gone and he just wants rid of them and you know i don't want to turn into that guy i think that's you know obviously we had a thing for this that's why we came back into it and i hope it lasts and that either we can you know i'm not saying it's going to be by my beach house all these comics would be nice but some of them I don't want to get rid of, but I don't want to be that guy in 20 years or 30 years at a show trying to, you know, sitting there like a bump on a log trying to get rid of my books, you know? Yeah, no, I think like if, if let's just say like my kids don't get into it, I think, and it, you know, down the line, I'm an old guy and they're like, well, I don't need these anymore because, you know, I think in that situation, I would just sell to like uh, a dealer at like, you know, how they buy clutch like 40% of whatever, that way they can make money off of them and then go on a nice vacation well that's really think but again my hope is that i can get one of my kids into it pass on to them as kind of like a legacy kind of thing um, yeah. who knows That'd what nice. uh i think uh what so what for you what are you listening to what are you watching to learn where do you shop now for these like how's that process gone like go through all that for yourself um i started with the antique stores and still do that because there's nothing close to me comic shop wise and the guy who owns the shop closest to me i don't really get along with him anymore <laughs> and so uh i mean i'm sure i can go back in there but i'm not gonna go to his establishment and the place in 60 miles away you know again they got some nice books there but they got them priced right so i'm just i enjoy the hunt of finding yeah. a book i still have it in my head that i will find a hulk 181 in some antique store someday sometime or some flea market yeah. Um, the coolest book I found at an antique store or at a flea market was, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna say it's the coolest one, but probably one you wouldn't see very often as bone one, which was the second printing. It's a comic from 1991 with, I think it's Greg Smith who drew it. And then bone two first printing those books themselves are first printing a bone. One is a $6,000 book. Second printing is a couple hundred bucks and same with, uh, same with uh, bone two, but they were just sitting in some random antique store. So you start finding something like that and you say, oh, there's got to be Fantastic Four one, ASM one, you know, Hulk 181 or ASM 129. Even I, there was a guy that I follow on Instagram this week that said, I found this pile of books at an estate sale. And there was X-Men one in there. Uh, and that was the biggest book. There was several I saw another guy I follow. He found like an ASM 300 for five bucks at a garage sale. 
Um, so there's definitely um, – obviously, the, those fines are like one in a thousand, right? But, I mean, you keep going – yeah, you're gonna, your chances are only going to get better. I'm not saying it's going to happen. They're only going to get better the more you do that. Right. And I liked, I watch um, Mint Hunter Comics. He does a lot of the flea market, antique store type stuff. He's buying collections now. I just saw a most recent one where he bought a pretty sizable collection. I like watching Lunch Money Comics because he's kind of like us where he got out of it for a while and got back in recently. And he hits up all the antique store and flea markets. And he has a nice wall behind him of all his books he found. Um you know, so he's got a nice story and a nice way he does his podcast or his uh, YouTube videos. Um, and then there's, you know, Comic Tom. There's Lords of the Long Box. I listen to to get the spec information. Uh, spec Tales is another good show. Um, but, I, you know, I when I'm either working out or when I am walk my dog, I'm listening to those podcasts. When I got downtime at home, I like to watch Mint Hunter and Lunch Money Comics. I like to watch them go through flea markets and see what they find because that's like me going to a flea market it's like <laughs> if i can't go tonight i can watch them go through there and see what they find and and uh i, I find that you know just en enjoy you know at, at times so it's uh that's about what i'm what i'm still hitting the antique stores and comic shows i think we're done for the year but um i'll probably continue to do that and see what i can find nice yeah, I, I like, um, so when I first, and I still still watch, like, the first guy I kind of, and I, I've watched most of those guys, you know, Mint Hunter and all these guys, the the, the ones that I still consistently watch, uh, and I found him very early on was that, it was Swaggle Haas, oh, yeah, um, yeah. and I've learned a ton from him, um, and then later on, uh, my favorite guy is Lawrence from Mighty Comics, and he's just kind of watching how he collects has really influenced how my tastes have, have become. Um, those are the two I watch the most consistently. Um, I started actually watching Lunch Money just on your recommendation. I enjoy that guy. Um, and there's a few other guys I, I watch here and there. Um, Reggie Collects, I guess, is another one yeah. I watch. Um, and it's great. I mean, you just learn a lot just by watching these guys. And the more you learn, the better you get at, you know, hunting and collecting. Because, like, when I first started collecting, like, I had a couple – there there are a couple stores uh, – by me where I could bounce around to. Um, and then I would do the eBay thing. Um, and then like after like, I started doing a lot on eBay and then like, I remember I got like, I've got probably like three or four books delivered to me on eBay by some schmuck that like, just put it in like a padded envelope with like no rigidity. And it's just like, what the hell is this? Like, uh, it wasn't graded. It was a, just a raw book in there. Yeah. And like, you know, plus you got the eBay fees. And I was just like, man, this gets expensive. Um, and then like, I just started following more people on Instagram and I would tell anybody right now, best place to buy, you know, obviously you may need to go to an auction house for your AF 15 and your whole one, obviously, but those do also pop on Instagram, but like, otherwise, like I would say buy on Instagram, man. Like you can talk to the dealers, you can negotiate some deals with them and just like becoming friends with them. It's easier to get better deals. Um, I haven't, um, you know, once it kind of got to September, I was like, you know, I've kind of gotten way into this. I got to kind of cool it down, <laughs> um, especially when you know, it was coming to the holiday season and things like that. And so I've been trading a lot, especially like as I have talked you've to you been, about. You've been like, killing it on the trade. Yeah, yeah, no, I've done super well. Um, but like I had like, you know, two boxes of like 10 and $20 comics, right? And I want bigger ones now. And so. I found, especially one guy specifically, where he was like, he's the guy that sells. And he's like, you know, with the economy how it is, it's like it's easier for me to sell ten fifty dollar books than it is for me to sell one five hundred dollar book. So we've been doing these bundle deals where it's like I'll send him a package of twenty five books, and then I got Iron Man one, yeah. right? I got Fantastic Four fifty two. I've gotten. Um, I just traded this week. I got Giant Size X Men one. It should be coming today or tomorrow. Um, you know, so on and so forth. And so like, I've taken my collection, which is, you know, was not huge to begin with, but I mean, it was two boxes and, you know, and I've got now like only one of those boxes, is like a third full. And then I've got a box of um, small box of graded books now. Um, and I enjoy this kind of hunting a lot more. Um, so instead of now buying, you know, 10 to 20 books a month, it's like a book every couple of months. So you're, you're hunting, 
on Instagram to find the, the person that can work the trade. Yeah. Right. Right now. Like, and then, and then, you know, you know, after we get through the holidays and things like that, I'll start, um, you know, just, ex- you know, buying as well. But I mean, like, again, like my budget is still at best you know, going to be a couple hundred bucks a month. So it's like, I'll kind of have to like aggregate that and then buy what I like or buy what I want. And so as I've showed you, it, you probably don't need to do this, but like I made a list of, I think there's 75. Yeah. You sent me that list of yeah, yeah. books you want. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's like, there's, there's silver age and bronze age, like blue chip books. Now those lists don't have, there's not a 15. There's not X-Men one. There's not tales of suspense 39. I, I'm kind of of the mindset that like, no, and plus like there's nothing golden age on there. There's no Batman ones. There's no tech 27s or action ones. Right. Cause I, I'm kind of of the mindset. Like those that's books a, are so far out. That's the a lottery here. list. That's yeah. That's lottery. Exactly. Like, when the lottery, you buy them. The only chance I could probably see myself getting those is finding them at the garage sale and things like that. Now, granted, I don't have antique stores. I mean, I, maybe I do. I just I haven't had the time to research and look and go hunt. Um, um, and I, I rarely see garage sales and I have popped into a few that I have seen. I've never seen comic books at a garage sale, even though I know that that does happen because I've seen guys say that. Um, but I mean, if I see one, I'm definitely going to stop by. Um, and maybe one day I find one of those there that in my prop. Cause the other thing too, is like, could I trade like Iron Man one fantastic Four Fifty Two, and several of these other, you know, blue chips, but on the smaller side, could I trade a bunch of them and get, an X Men one, potentially, but I don't know if I want to do that, right? Because I really like Fantastic Four fifty two. I really like Iron Man one, and it wasn't easy to get those. Yeah. And so you know, now I'll happily trade. You know, uh, what is it like? Uh, I had just traded part of my trade for the GSX one, right? I traded a uh, Captain America Annual eight, which is the first Captain America versus Wolverine battle. This is an awesome book. Uh, but it's worth like 25 bucks. So I'm like, I'll gladly put that in the deal for GSX one. Um, and things oh, yeah. like that. Well, that's, that's the thing too, is, is, um, like when I go to the antique store, I find a book I didn't really care to want, but I see margin to maybe get that book you're talking about the, uh, Captain America anyway, cause that's a cool book. Right. But again, am I going to, is it a PC book? Uh, yes. But is, do I, that's where I get a, get to this. At some point, maybe you grow out a favor of them. You wanted it for a bit. Now you want something bigger. You know, it's not a huge key, just a cool book, classic cover. Um, you know, and that's where I think you and I, when we look at books, it's classic cover or key. And, it, and you know, we're using Key Collector. That's one of the places I check in eBay for prices. But um, that's 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 for another day here. Yeah. Um, is to go into how we... we um, price these things out because I think that's the biggest issue now is trying to price these things out. But, you know, trying to find these keys and, you know, for myself, I may not find that, that Captain America eight, but I might find something else or something to, to buy into it. And I, then I keep and I got a like for it. And, you know, if I did have an opportunity to, to send out a bunch of books for something bigger, I probably would. But a lot of these, I'm just going to keep. And the stuff that I find at antique stores that aren't up my alley are just purely flip or spec books to, get what we're what you're talking about somehow right i've yeah. not been able to work a deal with a bunch of books through instagram i've done pretty well at comic shows but the most recent show i went to um they were really offering a lot less than what i had had hoped so i did come away with the, with a pretty good key that i wanted but again there's so much out there you know it's like you show me the ex the captain america 8 i'm like oh that's a cool book i'm gonna find that then the then captain america what is it 245 what one has the Hulk punch in the, the, um, I think it's two thirty actually, Hulk punch in uh, the shield, on that cover, Captain uh, America. I don't know. I, the one, the one, the, the Captain America book I always think of the Hulk, is it one ten? It's like an old Jim Steranko cover where he's like, you know, there's Cap and Bucky on the cover and and the Hulk like busting through a wall. Like I love that book. Oh, nice. I I don't know that one. I, the one I'm talking about is one where you see Cap's face and he's holding the, the shield up and all you see is the Hulk's. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know Punisher. what number it is, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I think it's 230. Then I think 240 has the Punisher on it. So those are like small little keys and there's nothing about the book except those characters are in them. But, you know, for me, those are cool to have as, you know, something you don't see every day. And I don't find them in antique stores. 
Yeah. I found other crap at antique stores that I can turn into getting those books. But once I have them, I'm going to probably keep those. But then again, it's going to come into a problem of how much do we keep? Yeah. You know, you want a short couple short boxes full of graded books. That's much easier to, to retain and keep on your walls or whatnot than boxes and boxes and boxes. Of yeah. I think that the question keep. I started to think about was like, if I am willing to grade whether or not, I mean, let's just say if I get a book, you know, we'll just talk about Ramos here, but like if I'm willing to go through the effort to get a book graded, then that's what I think is worth keeping in the PC. If not, then I'm, then it's tradable or expendable or however we'll look at it. Yeah. Right? And I think it's the time frame we're in now is that we're not, it's a buyer's market. It's not a seller's market. You know, I was buying stuff pretty easily. Early in the year, I had two copies of um, uh, Marvel Team Up, Team Up, one forty-one. I couldn't get rid of that second one to save my life. You know, I couldn't even trade it, right? But I could have bought ten more of them because there's a hundred people selling them, yeah. right? So maybe at some point when it becomes a seller's market again, maybe you can easily get rid of those those keys you're talking about. You're doing a pretty good job, job with it now on the trades, but maybe um, you know we'll see a time where we can actually flip them the other way now it's easy yeah. to buy because you get good prices but i'm just not seeing it on the other end of it of what i can sell and or what i can trade for yeah but then again i think my list of what i will trade what i will get rid of trade wise is kind of sh smaller than yours because i want to keep yeah. some of the ones i got but um i think one last thing maybe we can talk about here is as we finish things up is our short-term goals that we have um you know i think that's a good idea as we go into 2023 We've talked a little bit about where the market's been, where we might think it might go. Um, tell me, what are you thinking you're going to do in next year? I mean, you mentioned some of the, you know, once New Year, we're going to start buying again. But what targets do you have? And Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously, like we talked about, our next episode is going to be called The Hunt for 181. Um, and that's obviously Hulk 181, the first Wolverine. Uh, so that one's out there. Um Will it be feasible in 2023? I don't know. I mean, again, like like we said, we're not. I'm not a guy that could drop three thousand dollars tomorrow. But if um, you had three thousand, let's just say that, would you buy that? You buy that book without even thinking about it. If I had three thousand, that was expendable money. Yes, that would be the book I would buy. Not because I think it's the best investment, and because I I don't I think there's probably better investment books you can buy at three thousand dollars. But my three favorite characters are Silver Surfer, Wolverine, and Batman. Um, and so I'm not, <laughs> I'm not ever going to be able to get a tech 27, um, uh, fantastic Four Forty Eight is the other, is another book that I was just going to mention, but I'll say so and then Wolverine. So it's like Wolverine or Hulk 181 is a book I want for personal reasons, not because it's like the best investment book. I want it because Wolverine, I love Wolverine. And, and also I'll also add in my opinion, Hulk 181 is the best cover out there it does not get better than that um okay uh and so like that kind of adds to it um so obviously hulk 181 is always out there but like like we talked about we're gonna that's gonna be a whole other so we're gonna talk about like how do we strategize to get there um because i don't have three thousand dollars to spend and then two uh would be ff48 for silver surfer um uh, i've got 49 i've got 50 um uh, i'm hoping i can still make one last trade um and maybe potentially get the ff48 um that may be happening hopefully uh and then uh asm 129 would be the third book i would say that i will prioritize in 2023 uh, and that's what i think like with my couple hundred dollars a month aggregating is one i can get because like you see those like the prices for those is going down and you know, I think they'll go back up once like the Daredevil board again series starts popping off trailers and probably get a hint at Punisher. Uh, but I think right now and in the next few months will be a good time um, to get that. So those yeah, would be the three. I'll, those are the three high priority books I want to go after. Um, from there, obviously, I always will keep an eye out for all the other books on my list of 75 that we talked about that I can find at good deals. Yeah. So whenever you go to the comic store, you take this list out like this well it's on my phone like right it's on my, it's on my notes thing for yeah <laughs> but yeah I, I that's i have like a running list in my head and that's the thing like I, I again like 
I went to a show this weekend or last weekend, and I wanted to try to trade for that Hulk 181. I had money on me to buy it, um, at least some part of it, and I just couldn't get enough on trade to, to make it worth it. And I hate going going all the way to a show and not coming back with something decent. So I think I made a decent trade and got some cash for some other stuff. But it just, you know, you go into it, and I've gone to the last couple of shows with intentions of buying certain books, and sometimes they're just unreachable. So you got to find that one dealer that you've been able to do and just work them or a couple guys because a show, I just, I've had luck trading things and getting some things, but usually the ones that are top on my list, I don't, I don't, they're just overpriced there. Yeah. I feel like shows are, yeah. For those, those books you're talking about, like, I think shows are always like, they're pretty high priced. Um, and then they're not willing to trade for him. The one guy yeah. he had, you know, had like, I think ASM 129 was raw. He wanted 2000 for it and wouldn't trade for it. You know, yeah, and I, it's like you, you could buy a graded at one twenty nine for less than right, right. Dollars. But if you if you got margin in your books and you might be able to give them like books you don't care about and you get it, right? Totally. At least you got it there. But so I look at it that way. But if I didn't, I'm not going to give them two grand for that, right? Because it's like yeah. you're overpriced. Because I can get it, like you just said, graded. Yeah. Um, but it's just I, I met a guy this weekend who bought a collection that I saw on Facebook and was going to put an offer on, but I wasn't willing to spend 10 or 15,000 on a collection. I just, I don't need 41,000 books, yeah. you know, just to the opportunity to get a Hulk 181. And he bought the collection and I think it was 12 long boxes, 12. Yeah. So I figured, I figured like 12 grand was a good price for that. He said a couple people came in at 12. He offered the guy 30 and won it. 30,000. Thirty thousand dollars. That's why he wasn't buying any of my books because he had just spent thirty grand on twelve long boxes. He got a GSX one out of it, two Hulk one eighty ones, and a, a bunch of keys that he said just selling the GSX one and the Hulk one of the Hulks would pay for half the collection. The rest he'd get back over time. And I thought, do I want to wait on fifteen thousand dollars to come back to me through these various trades and sell? Yeah, and not to mention, I mean, I think the other thing you have to take into account with that. Um, are you like, you know, are you someone that wants 12 long boxes? And if you are, that's great. Like, I don't got the room for it at my house. Um, like, I want to have comics on the wall. I don't need 12 long. Like, it's all about what you want, right? Like, I, right. You know, some people are like, I want to collect ASM 1 to 300. And that's awesome. If you could do it, that's a challenge. That's awesome. But, you know, you all got to know what you want. So it's like, when I think about buying a collection, it's like, do I want to spend that much money for the hope of a 181? But then I also have to deal with 40,000 other books. Yeah. Um, That's what this guy had, to, had yeah. to do. Are they in good shape? You know, yeah. and all that, it comes down to it, trying to like, again, find those books and, and what, you know, eventually maybe they'll come down, like you were saying, because these dealers are, you know, seeing what the market's doing. But I, uh, you know, I just couldn't bring myself to, and I couldn't bring myself to doing that kind of a, a number to have that many books just to worry about. Cause I, if you're spending that kind of money, I want it graded. Yeah. I don't and want I, any ands, ifs or buts about it. Yeah, exactly. You want to know what you have. Exactly. I totally right. I'll buy, that. I'll buy a raw one for a grand, maybe or 1500 and say, Oh, it probably a three, but this guy wants to get rid of it. But I'm, I'm not spending the, the one guy wanted 2,500 bucks for a one missing a page on that yeah. 181. I don't want it to come back restored. That's a kiss of death for any books. So, but that's, yeah, exactly. that's some stuff we learned throughout the time here the last year of restored purple and green labels. So um, that seems to be what we're running into is those are the easiest ones to get because people want to unload them because they don't want that problem. It's like having yeah. a car that has a sound in the engine or whatnot. Someone just wants to get rid of it. Yeah. And buy I, something else. I, I will add though, like, since we were talking about where to buy, like one other thing I like about Instagram, like if you go to a store, right? Like I say, I have my list of 75 right they may have any given store may have three or four of those if that best right oh the 75 and of the 75 let's just say yeah. right whereas like instagram if you follow multiple dealers you can find a lot of those almost you'll see them every week um so it just opens up the world of where you can buy and then two a lot of the guys there i find are not like brick and mortar store dealers as well. So they don't have to deal with like overhead costs and things like that. And so their margin doesn't need to be as large. Um, and they're much more apt to make good deals and things like that. So just something I think uh, that works well. Um, so, yeah, I agree. It's, 
it's been a, it's been an interesting year. I've enjoyed it. Um, yeah, it's super fun. And like, I mean, hell, you and I have met just via Instagram. So like, yeah, and that's because your sense. your name back in the game. I was like, this guy's the same as me, getting back yeah. into it, and and uh, you know how, how the collections have grown. And you know, I think you're going to be my um, what do you call it? My uh, my trade guy to try yeah. to work trades out if you can, because uh, <laughs> you've been able to do. Um, cause there are, again, some books I have on my short term list, um, same one as you, maybe we'll just buy one Hulk 81 together and just <laughs> save the money and, you know, ship it back and forth. We'll mail it back and forth across the country. It'll be like the, the Stanley cup, right? We yeah, just get to hold exactly. it for a little bit. <laughs> yep. But, uh, maybe I think we'll both get it this year. I think there'll be a chance. I'm hopeful of that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm probably on the same boat with a couple, one love the uh, Hulk 181 is on my list and. Again, I see new books all the time I'd like to buy, so I can't really say I got a huge list, but there are definitely some cool books I see through Instagram that show up and I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember that book, and I want to have that. And yeah. I think I want to be in that old guy that has too many books that he's got to get rid of. Yeah, I'll have some keys I want to keep on the wall, but there's going to be like that Power Pack 10 that I bought as a kid. You know, yeah. I'm going to keep that one for whatever nostalgia region, but um but yeah, it's all what you like. It's been a hobby. It's it's been fun, and um, you know, I think you know I've want to do a podcast and talk about stuff like this, and I hope we can do another one again. Like we said, next one will be the Hulk one eighty one, and I hope we can continue to grow them from there. And um, you know, those of you that are listening, uh, you can find me at at nineteen seventy seven Nerd Alert Rohan. You have your yeah, I'm uh, at back in the game comics uh, on Instagram. You can check out the stuff I got. Um, yes. I will add on my uh, my list of 75, right? I just talked about three books I want for 2023. That's kind of the rate of which I put. So when I say that list, that is like a 15 to 20 year list long term what list. I want to work at. That's not something I expect to get in the next two years. That is a long term list. Right. Yep. No, I, I remember you said that. And that's like just plotting, plotting, plotting it out to get to that point. Yeah, that's that's good. That's good planning. I, and what's good about that, right, with that list is yes, it can grow, but like since I'm not into I, and I'm not into modern books, so it's not like that list is going to really expand. Like the stuff I want is already known entities. No, yeah, right, right. right? It's like not going to grow from seventy five to eighty to eighty five because yeah, of, yeah, because the new Spider Man came out or whatever. It's like I don't, I don't collect modern. You don't want the M M&M and M Spider Man? No, came no. I, I do think it's a super cool cover, but uh, definitely not, not, not for me. All right. Yeah, if I came across it, I might get it, but I might spend that kind of money on it. Again, again, where would you rather put your money? And that's into that towards a Hulk 181 or some other key besides a book like that. Yeah, I mean, but like that's a perfect example. Like you may find that book, you can find it for like 10, 20 bucks, and you may be able to sell it for 60 bucks. So, yeah, and that's trying to get the, the margin to get those next bigger books, but slow going. But I mean, again, you can, it's, uh, I think the, the time of year we're in is where stuff like this slows down for us and the dealers because yeah. no one's buying anything till Christmas. And maybe there'll be a big, big gluttony of money from people in January and we can unload some stuff or do some decent trades to uh, start that hunt for 181 and, and get it before, yeah. so before July. Tuned. Hopefully next week we'll do the hunt for 181 episode. That'll be our episode two. Yep. And anyone have any questions or want to message us, you got our Instagram pages. Yeah. Uh, feel free to, to hit us up. Love to hear from anybody. Yeah. Um, I'm always down to talk comics. It's super fun. I mean, that's how JP and I became friends. So I'm all about it. Yep. Definitely. So we'll sign off. It has been, that's enough said, as Stan Lee would say. Uh, it's been fun. And we look forward to uh, our next cast. And uh, hope everyone has a great day. All right. Later. Peace.